Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this day. This day, this is the day that you have made. So, God, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for midweek refill. Thank you for a day of worship, God. And we praise, honor, for all the praise reports that have went forth, God. And we just thank you, God, for you hearing our cry, for you hearing our prayers and answering them, God. And we just believe still, God, that you're doing, you're answering prayers, even at, in the midst of this call. Yes. So God, we pray right now that we will be steadfast, unremovable, always abiding in your faith, in you, God. We thank you for what you're about to do on this call. We believe this is a platform for miracle signs and wonders. Even though we're assembled uh, separately in our, in our various places, God, we still believe that you can do the miraculous in that oh, home, yes. in that car, yes. in that workplace. God, yes. we thank you right now thank for you. what you're about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Give him praise. Amen. Psalm, <laughs> look at Psalm 29. And I just want to yes. read two verses, two verses, verse four and five. Be sure to get you a pencil and a pen, paper. You know, remember now, midweek refill. We write. We write. We Amen. write. Because I'm, I'm right. God has been really downloading some things. And I just really want to start slowing it down on Wednesdays. And, and we're just gonna go through the Bible. We're gonna, we're gonna uh you know study the word. So um Psalm 29, verses four and five. Four and five. Um, it reads as such. Our um our virtual media team, she's on vacation this week. So she's not gonna be able to put the scripture up. She's on vacation, Brittany. So, so yeah, Psalm 29, verse four. We'll start right there and read four and five. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. I think I need to say it again. The voice of the Lord is powerful mm -hmm. and majestic, mm -hmm. and it breaks the cedars. Mm -hmm. It breaks the cedars in pieces of Lebanon. And I just mm -hmm. want to talk for the time we have tonight. Whose voice are you listening to? Mm -hmm. so, I just want to let that that surface for a minute. Whose voice are you listening to? Um, I would never, I would never forget. It was an old commercial with Wayne Wade on it, and it showed him like supposed to have been in a game, a basketball game, NBA game, mm -hmm. and he was going down the court, and all of a sudden, two heads popped up on his shoulder, on the left and the right. It was his face, <laughs> and and so as he was going down, and he was about to, he was on a fast break, about to dunk the ball. The one on the left was arguing with him, saying, "You you need to lay it up." The one on the right was saying, "Dunk it." So they both were saying, "Lay it up, dunk it." Lay it up, dunk it. Finally, he just stopped in the middle of the court, stopped right there without even laying it up or dunking it. Why am I saying that? Because sometimes if we're not careful, the voices we hear will not only confuse us, but it will cause us to stop in the middle of this journey with God. And God has given you a promise. He has given you a plan. That's why we must make sure that we are we are we are hearing God's voice and God's voice only. Uh, as a matter of fact, write this down. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me. And the only way we can follow God is if we get to the point where we know God's voice, because there's all kinds of voices we're going to hear. Just today, you heard all kinds of voices at work. You've heard all kinds of voices in your family. You've heard all kinds of voices with your friends and even had some phone calls that you really didn't want. And you heard that voice too. Come on, y'all, talk to me. And this is a season that David is going through. He's reflecting on the importance and the impact of God's voice. And there is something about God's voice because it brings restoration uh, versus confusion. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Bible tells us God is not the author of confusion. Because anytime you're in the midst of some confusion, you best believe God is not a part of that. Because God mm -hmm. said, I'm, my, my word is straightforward. Mm -hmm. I have, I, it, it, would, it would never return to us void. So therefore, God says, when I said it, that settles it. Anytime you find yourself in an argument, God is not in that. You know, sometimes people want to start an argument even about the word of God, even about mm -hmm. different things. Be sure that you know what you know. 
and you know God's voice versus all of these other voices. Because one of the most dangerous things in life is if we don't take heed to the yeah. voice of God. Yeah. And oftentimes, yeah. oh, some of y'all thinking right now, I don't hear, I've, I've, I haven't heard from God since I've been saved. And sometimes we're looking for an audible voice, but sometimes God will use this faint voice. Sometimes he will speak through confirmation mm -hmm. from someone else yeah. or from yeah. a situation. Have you yeah. ever heard, have you ever just heard, thought you heard from God, but you wasn't sure, but then it was confirmed through a situation. Mm -hmm. It was confirmed through somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about God, because when God tells you something, you best believe he's going to show you that it was him that said it. And mm -hmm. I've, I've learned that there's times, even with the spot church, I get members that call me on a Monday or Sunday after church. They said, pastor, you was all up in my Kool-Aid. You was all in my suit, you was in my kitchen. Sometimes they might think that somebody told me about their situation, but that's when you know that it was the word of God yes. that was speaking through the man of God that allowed you to hear oh, yes. and get com uh, confirmation oh, yes. about your situation. Yes. That's why it's important to hear the word and not just be hearers, but how I many you know we gotta be doers? Doers. Yes. Mm -hmm. now, where it's not enough just to hear God's voice, but now we have to do what God said to do. Come on, y'all, because yes. His word Amen. is where we really are going to hear His voice. The more we study His word, the more His voice will become clear to us. It may not be audible, but His voice will come speaking through that word that you're reading. Maybe mm -hmm. that's why right. in John one and one they said, "In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God." And the word was God. That's because Jesus' ministry was all about the voice of God. Wherever Jesus went in his ministry and in his time, he was always speaking from the voice of God. Come on. And that's just like you and I. We have to be careful what we even share with other people. Don't just share something coming from you. I tell people all the time, this is not the BIV. This is not Bobby International Version. No, this is the NIV. This is the NLT. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says because that is the voice of God. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Because we must have an ear to hear from the Lord. And, in, and during this time, David, David is defending, he's defending and explaining to the people that they must discern the voice of God. David was a little upset during this, this uh, text right here because this was a time when the Can uh, Canaanites were worshiping the false uh, false God named Baal, right? And he they were worshiping him and they were considering him the storm God. Watch this, the Canaanites would go out to the forest and they will worship this false God, mm -hmm. thinking that this false God will bring the rain that they needed. Mm -hmm. Watch me now. Mm -hmm. They were like substituting the real God for this yeah. false God. So whenever the rain and the storm came, they thought it was because of the false God. Yeah. But they who knew the true and living God got yeah. upset. That's why in verse one, it says, ascribe the Lord, you yeah. have been beings. He was talking to the Canaanites. He was telling them, you need to give credit where credit is due mm -hmm. because can mm -hmm. happen without God's oh, permission. Yeah. You know, I mm -hmm. learned in life, even through the good times and yeah. the bad times, the mm -hmm. devil got to have permission to even allow bad things to happen in our That's life. Right. God mm -hmm. is God. He's faithful. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. David was a little heated right here because they had it all twisted. They were thinking it was this false God named Baal that was causing all these things to happen. But how many know whenever anything happened in our life, whether it's good or bad, but especially when we are getting blessed with, with one blessing after another, we got to give God all the credit. That's what a scribe means. A scribe means to give God credit to give God an account on what the ble where the blessing came from. And I think we could just talk, take a pause right quick. And we all just thank God right now for the sun that's shining. Yeah. We all are thank yes. you for the, for the roof that's over our head. We all are thank yes. you for the of health that oh, we have. Yeah. Because if it had yes. been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be. Maybe that's why Hebrews 3, yes. write this down. It says, remember what it said, Today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Because this was when Israel was rebelling against the Lord. Because their 
hard. was hard. And you know, there's a time where you can't afford to be distanced from the voice of God because the further you away from God, God the harder your heart will get. Yes. That's why when we came to God, when yes. we gave our life to God, he started working on not the outside, but he started working on the inside yes. because what, what he's doing on the inside will eventually yes. show what he's doing, uh, what he's done on the outside. Amen. It just looks good on the outside yes. and be all broken and be all jacked up yes. on the inside. God, yes. do a work on my heart, do a work yes. on my mind, do a work on my mouth. Come on, yes. because you know if it had not been for God, you would have still been the cussing bandit that you used to be. Come on, y'all. But I thank God. I thank God for his power because it took God's power to pull us out and it's going to take God's power to keep us out. Mm -hmm. mm, somebody might yeah. need to go down. It took God's power to deliver you, and it's going to take God's power to continue to be walking this deliverance. Yes, Amen. You'll catch that Amen. later because there's nothing Amen. that we can do now and say that it was all because of I, I did this or that or I changed that or that. The only thing we can do is that I gave my life to Christ. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, gave my life to Christ. Right. I'm not even going to try to explain, you know, the, the journey. I'm just going to tell you, I gave my life to Christ. One day I was broken. I gave my life to Christ. One day I was heartbroken. I gave my life to Christ. One day I was I was fit to die. I gave my life to Christ and I'm living today. Come on. Somebody ought to thank God for that. Yeah. Because Psalms 23 tells us his rod mm -hmm. and his staff, they comfort us mm -hmm. because it's the shepherd's presence that keeps us and protects us. Because if we were like, we're, we're just like sheep. That's what the Bible say. We go astray. But the shepherd is the one that leads us and guides us. And that's why it says it's his rod and his staff. Because the rod is what clears the path for us. But the staff is what pulls us back in. Amen. Y'all know y'all yes. haven't always walked straight on this journey. Y'all know y'all veered to the left. Come on, veer to the right. But it was God's staff that had to pull us back in. It was the good shepherd. Somebody ought to praise God for the good shepherd. Amen. It, is universal. it teaches us uh two it teaches us a few things about God's voice. The first thing it says, the voice of the Lord brings courage. Write that down. The voice of the Lord brings courage. In verse four, it says, the voice of the Lord is powerful. Mm -hmm. I love that right there because it says the Lord is powerful. And it gives you and I a reason to have courage. And we get our courage through his word. Have you ever just been reading God's word and you feel like I can't do it? You feel like there's no way I can accomplish this. There's no way I'm going to get out of this. And that's why the word, you know, I say it all the time. Minister Bev helped me with this. She said, you got to put a word on it. Come on, y'all. We got to put a word. Because when you say I can't do something, the word has an answer for that. It says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When you think you are all alone, the word says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And when you think that you cannot be healed from whatever this sickness is, the word says with his stripes, we are healed. I'm telling you, the word brings us that courage. And I love reading God's word because when you read God's word, you, you hear in God's voice. And when you hear God's voice, something happens. Uh -huh. Anytime you hear God's voice, there's always going to be something that happens. There's always a shift because whatever God done, whatever God says, and whatever he speaks, then it, it, it comes accomplished. It becomes accomplished. Yeah. Watch this. In Genesis, once he said, let there be light, it instantly was light. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. And then not only was it light. He says, I need to separate this light from darkness. That's why we have morning and night. Y'all, yeah. sometimes we forget just how powerful our, our God is. Then he says, even in the night, we still need to have some, some, some light. So he said, let me put some stars up there. You know, then, then he says, I need to separate the light from the land. That's why we have land now, because he separated what he called the vault. He had a separation between God is powerful, y'all. And then he says, we need to put some vegetation and all that on the land. Y'all, I'm not going to go through it. Read Genesis 1. But sometimes we need to reflect over just how powerful our God is. Matter of fact, when he was on the boat, yes. 
and the storm came raging and they didn't know what to do, but Jesus was on their boat, y'all. We oh, talked yeah. about it Sunday. Mm -hmm. Jesus was chilling. Jesus was sleeping. They got all out. They, they got, they panicked and they got all out beside themselves. But Jesus woke up and he said, peace. Be still. Be still. And instantly the wind stopped blowing. East instantly the water stopped raging. Oh. And instantly the disciples stopped complaining. Ah, <laughs> somebody let somebody know that this is the peace that surpasses all understanding. Somebody ought to know God's voice from the enemy's voice because it's something that oh. happen when you hear God's voice. Yes. God's voice must be rooted on the inside of us because there's a yes. of power that comes when he speaks. Mm -hmm. That's why I love and that's why we have our 6 a.m. prayer because we want to hear from God at the top of the day oh, yeah. because we don't want to just leave the house without talking to God and hearing his voice. Yes. We don't hear his voice and then we hear somebody oh, else's yeah. voice that's mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. out of their neck. Come on, oh, can yeah. I talk to you? When we're going to yeah. end up acting oh, the flesh and we got to hear God's voice for our day. That's why yes. he says, that's why he says, start your day with me and I will dictate the rest of your day. If yes. you God, he will dictate the rest. And mm -hmm. I would love it because you couldn't tell me years ago that, that I would be a pastor. You couldn't tell me that years ago. You couldn't even tell me that probably about five or six years ago. You know, I had a, you know, I had a, I, I, God started speaking, but I was still in my little comfort zone, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But then the time where the voice of the Lord will begin mm -hmm. to speak louder and louder. I'm talking to somebody right now god is speaking to you about your purpose god is speaking to you about where where you should be serving god is speaking to you about a business and you 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 you're, you're drowning them out because you're thinking that's just another voice no sometimes god speaks to you and he tells you things that you won't even believe that you can accomplish and i'm standing here at the pastor of the spot church because i took heed to god's voice and i didn't have to have all the facts but I did have faith, and that's all you need. You don't have to try to figure out how it's going to work out. Just know that God says in, I mean, the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things will work together for your good. That's why I love it, because I know that it had nothing to do with me. It was all about God's voice that's speaking through me on Sunday mornings, on Wednesday nights. It's all about God and God's voice. I thank God for his voice. Because God's voice. God's voice is like none other because it will give you that ability, mm -hmm. it will give you that courage to face the unthinkable. It will give you that uh, mm -hmm. ability and that courage to do the un unimaginable. You know, some of y'all are jobs and you're still scratching your head. You got all <laughs> these all these uh, assignments and you don't know how you're going to do it. You don't even know how you did the last uh, task, but God worked it out for you. And I want to tell yeah. somebody who's not a respecter of person, mm -hmm. what he's done for one, he will do it for another. Can somebody just say, do it, Lord? I need somebody to pat yeah. themselves. Do it. Yes. Just do no, it. I don't need him to show up for you, but somebody ought to say, do it for my brother. Do it for my just sister. Do God, it. I need you guys to comfort me mm -hmm. in the midst of this storm. Y'all, we talked about it Sunday. We talked about it. I in made the it name storm, of Jesus. But the only way I made it through the storm was mm -hmm. when God comforted me. It was God's voice that got me through the storm. And, and, and the way you know and you can discern God's voice is through the Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 That's right. And this That's is right. why it's vital. This is why it's vital. You know, I call I call the fast today and, and we pray because it's vital that we speak, we yeah. feed the spirit man and starve the flesh. Yeah. Because every yeah. now and then, you know, we, we talked about it. Some things only come out by fasting and praying. praying. And sometimes we think that it's got to come out of somebody else or it's got to come out of this situation. No, sometimes yeah. some things got to come out of us. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and the only way it's going to come out of yes. you is if you turn over the plate, if you yes. close your computer, right. if you cut yeah. the TV off, yes. you yeah. take, out, take away all the distractions so I can just hear from God. Y'all, I'm going to hear about you. But even me as the pastor of the spot church, y'all, every now and then, I got to shut it down. I got to yeah. shut it down so I can just yes. hear from yeah. I need yeah. to hear from you, God, before yes. I make this decision. Yeah. I need to hear from you, God, before I yeah. take another step. And I need somebody on this call tonight yes. just to shout it out or type it in there. God, I need to hear from you. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, I need to hear from need you. need to hear from you. The flesh 
will try to yes. take us on a detour from our destiny. Yeah. If, if you mm -hmm. operate in the flesh, you'll end up taking a detour from your, from your road to your yes. destiny. And, and I know I'm a witness to that because there's times mm -hmm. where I know the right path that God put me on. Then all of a sudden there's a distraction. Yeah. Then all of a sudden there's all these voices. Then before you know it, there's a delay to me getting to my destination because okay. not because of what something, something somebody else did, well, it's because I took a detour. Right. Y'all, yes. this is a season right. where we have to take ownership in our walk. Yes. It's a yes. personal journey. Even for married folk, it's a personal journey. That lady yes, that has her personal walk with God, I have my personal walk, but together we have a personal walk together. But I'm telling you, this is a personal journey. It's a person and the flesh, it seems like it always want to rise up. And that's mm -hmm. when you start making quick decisions. That's when temptation comes mm -hmm. in. That's when you eventually become frustrated. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul said in Galatians 5, 24, write this down. He says, we need to crucify the flesh daily. Daily. <laughs> yeah. daily. He didn't say just, you know, weekly. He didn't say, you know, every other day, y'all. We need to wake up in the morning <laughs> and tell that flesh. That yes. the spirit yes. man is getting out the bed, but that flesh, you can stay right there. Yes. Come on, y'all. You need to tell the flesh. When you walk out that door, flesh, where you think you're going? Come on. You need to talk to the flesh. When you get in that car, yes. you think that before you put that uh, car in drive, you need to tell that flesh, flesh, where you think you're going? You ain't driving nothing. Come on, I'm trying to get you. Before you walk in Walmart, you need to tell that flesh. You need to stay in the car. I need to tell somebody that because y'all know y'all go in Walmart. Y'all be ready to cuss. Y'all be ready to cut up. Come so you need to make sure you're walking in the spirit. And Amen. We, yes. Sunday, we talked about long suffering because we love talking about the yes. of spirit and talk about peace, joy, love, goodness, gentleness. But y'all, we got to we gotta look at that long suffering because yeah. I got a feeling somebody right now, you've Jesus. been in this season right now Jesus. where it seems like this suffering that you're going through has been long. But I thank God that I gave you two Greek words on Sunday and that says long suffering in Greek means long and temper. Long and temper. Well, it means you should have a short fuse now because now you're operating in the in the spirit. You operate in the fruit of the spirit. And when you operate in the fruit of the spirit, long suffering don't mean the same thing when you're operating in the flesh. Because yeah. long suffering means it's a good thing in the spirit because now I don't have that short fuse I used to have. I have a long fuse. Yeah, I, I can be patient while I'm going through this storm because I know that weeping may endure for a night. Come on, come on, saints. But joy is coming in the morning. And I don't know about you, but when I woke up this morning, the sun was shining. Come on, mm -hmm. I'm about the S U N, but I'm talking about the S O N. Somebody, yeah. else, come on in, son. I'm not talking about the sunlight, but I'm talking about the sun that can sun. Up your darkness. Oh, come on, y'all. I'm preaching, and y'all don't even hear. Thank God for His voice, because the Holy Spirit is what quickens us. It quickens us. It gives us the courage. To overcome the enemy, y'all want to y'all wonder some. You ought to wonder sometimes. How do you how do you keep from doing things that you used to enjoy doing? Well, can I just keep it real? Thing? Can you yeah. just think about the stuff that you used to couldn't say no to? Now you can say no to. Nope. Hallelujah. Y'all want to act like y'all just you know been saved all your life. <laughs> all your life. No, 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 no. There was some things that you couldn't even have the strength to say no. There were some people that you couldn't tell no. You couldn't say no to. And you know, you know, you knew God was saying you need to cut it off. You, you need to not even answer that phone. Don't you get in that car. That's right. Don't you go there with That's them. Right. But 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 thank God that even when we did, his grace led us back home. Thank God. Even when we did, and we may have done oh, some yeah. things we know we shouldn't have done, but his mercy brought us back home. Thank I just you. need somebody just to lift your hands real quick and just thank God for his mercy. Oh, yes. His mercy. Mm -hmm. yes. Because oh, there was a time where, where, where we were fire starters, but now we oh, put out the fire. Come on, y'all. <laughs> now, now we put out the fires because there was a time we started the fire. Y'all know the party didn't start until you got there. 
Y'all gonna act like that? Y'all gonna act like that? Y'all know. Y'all know. They were, they, were, they were calling your name out. Like, where's Steve at? Where, when is he gonna, when's Steve gonna get here? Y'all know it. Y'all know it. Because the party didn't start until you got there. Yeah. But to the God, the party still can go on. Come on, y'all. Yeah. We just switched partners. We just don't dance with the enemy no more. We dance with God. And this party that we go to now don't stop. You know, the parties Ooh. we used to go to stopped at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., you know, but now this party. It's ongoing yeah, because it's ongoing. A party it's like a it's Holy Ghost party funny. because a Holy Ghost party don't. Holy Ghost party. You know, sometimes even when we leave the spot on Sundays and the and the praise is yeah. high. Sometimes yeah. I'm gonna get in my car and that party's still going on. Yeah. And then we walk up in this house and we still partying, y'all. And yeah. then I go to bed. I wake up the next day. I put it still in the cool. thread and I tell the leaders, y'all know what? I'm still, still full. Cool. Yes, because this is the party that don't stop, and I wish I had somebody right now on the wind that can say I'm still partying from Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still partying from this morning. I'm still partying from reading the ah. word. I'm still partying from praying and talking to my God. That's what. That's why we can put out the fires now. We put it out. We put it out. We ain't with that drama no more. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm a fire marshal uh, at the fire department. And one of my jobs is to, I'm an inspector. So so I go and inspect facilities and, and, and I inspect them for life safety. And then really we're like fire prevention. And so mm -hmm. we're trying to prevent fires from happening. So we go through the building and we're checking out the whole building, making sure there's nothing that can possibly cause a fire. Can I tell you something? God told me to tell somebody this. He said, that's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit for us is a, is a spiritual inspector. And the Holy Spirit is inside of us and is inspecting everything inside of us to keep from any fires jumping off that shouldn't jump off. Come on, y'all. I, I, that's why I can thank God for the Holy Spirit. I can thank God for my spiritual inspector because if it had not been for the spiritual inspector, the Holy Ghost, keeping me from doing some things I wanted to do, from starting some stuff I wanted to start, from saying things I, I didn't need to say. Y'all, y'all, that pastor, like he don't talk like that no more. Can I just be transparent? It still comes in my mind at times, but I thank God for the spiritual inspector. I said in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, write this down. Do you know, do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Who is in you and whom you have received from God. You are not your own anymore. Mm -hmm. You right. are controlled by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians yes. 6 and 19. Y'all, this is a new temple. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. God is doing a new thing. Come on, y'all. Somebody say, Amen. God is doing Hallelujah. God is doing a new thing, and He's doing it from the inside out. I may not be where Amen. I am, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Yes. Somebody say, thank God for progress. Thank God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so the Lord will give us courage, but then the Lord, the Lord's voice brings mm -hmm. comfort. Watch this. It says the Lord, uh, the voice of the Lord is majestic. Majestic means soothing and comforting. And, and there are many voices that we'll hear, but we need, need to make sure that we're so close to God that we know that was God that said that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4, write this down. It says that we need to guard our inner gate and our eye gate. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the stuff that we hear, even on a daily can bring discomfort and discouragement. Mm -hmm. But I know the voice of God brings encouragement and mm -hmm. it brings uh, comfort. Yeah. And that's what we want. That's why we got to hear God's voice because y'all, we in a time now with all this craziness jumping off, with all this chaos mm -hmm. and calamity, y'all, we need to have God's comfort. Y'all, we, we're seeing it on, on far too many times. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it too often where we're seeing these school shootings. We're seeing, we're seeing mm -hmm. all of this stuff going on with, yeah, with, with, with uh, storms and things. Y'all, the Bible talks about this stuff and we're going to go through it one day. I'm going to go through revelations for it with us. None of this, none of this is new, but y'all, we have to make sure that we don't conform to this world. Mm -hmm. That's why Romans 12 and two says, do not conform yes. to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. 
I will never normalize what is going on in this world. And I will never allow the news and nothing anybody tell me to say this is just the norm. No, the right. devil is a lie. And we is a lie. as children of God yes. and as the body of Christ yes. together as collectively and pray. That's why I call this prayer today, our fast today, because I'm just to the point now where we need to call on God. We need to call on the, the one that can change this situation. Come on, y'all. And I know God is able to do it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Jesus. See, we have Amen. to be careful because there are some people that just want God's power mm -hmm. and not his presence. Mm -hmm. Not his presence. They want, you said they want say God's that again. hands, but they don't mm -hmm. want God's heart. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know about mm -hmm. you, but I made up in my mind, I need everything. I need all of God. I need all of God. Of God. I need your power. I need your presence. I need your protection. Come on, y'all. I need it all. It's I just all. told you this world is crazy, it's chaotic, but we need mm -hmm. God's comfort through his word. Come on, because God yes. tells us that yes. he is a present help in the time of trouble. And I don't know who, who needs to hear that right now, but I need somebody just to tell, tell, uh, tell yourself, catch yourself, and say God is a present help in a time. God is a present help. God is a present help. But see, this is like the Israelites. They were to the point where they would see God's power. No but they would really turn from his presence. Every time God would pull them out of something, they would go right back into what he pulled them out of. And that's because they wanted his power. They wanted him to deliver them. But they didn't want his presence all the time. And y'all, I made up my mind. Without his presence, I would be right back out there doing what I used to do. Yeah. Yes, Pastor. I got to mm -hmm. stay in his presence because yes. his presence gives me courage and it comforts me because mm -hmm. I learned this. I'm reading a book and I'm going to share it with some people here soon after I get done with it. But one thing that book told me was it's, or one thing that was in that book, it says distance leaves room for disobedience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you'll catch that mm -hmm. later. Anytime. Yeah. You're, amen. Anytime you're distance, mm -hmm. you, you best believe disobedience is coming up behind you. That's right. And anytime there's disobedience, the next step is destruction. Mm. That's mm. right. Because John 10 and 10 says the thief don't come to play. The thief don't come just to tickle you and, and play with you. No, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And destroy. And you're in, we're living in a time mm -hmm. where we want to play with the enemy. We must stay in God's presence and stay in God's word because that's what brings us courage and comfort. But I also Amen. Say, this cause a sense of fear. Have you ever felt like, you know, you were just afraid of something? Because God don't give us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. of love, power, and, no sound man. and anytime mm -hmm. fear tries to come in, that means we might be a little distance from God. Because anytime we're, we're we're connected to God and we're we're hearing from God, yeah. Yeah. Have the courage. Mm -hmm. yeah. in the Thank midst you, of the storm, you still got courage. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are scratching Amen. their head. They're wondering how are you even stand uh, or stand in a in the mood that you're staying in with all that you're going through. It's because of the word of God and his voice. Because now Amen. That I'm encouraged, but I am comforted. Amen. I'll never forget me and Lady Vile. We went to uh, Cozumel. <laughs> she gonna laugh. We went to Cozumel. I was thinking about this today, and we got on a canoe and we took this canoe out to the water. Y'all, we were talking. It wasn't just a water. Okay, it, it was the ocean. ocean. It was the ocean. It was the ocean. <laughs> we were having a ball. I mean, the sun was out. We were just loving the app, the, the environment. We were loving the water. And, but but what happened was, let me tell you. I mean, what happened was we were loving the scenery. We seen the fish in the water and all that. We looked up though. We forgot. We looked up and we we noticed how far we was from the bank, the shore. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Bow got scared. She had a, she had a little anxiety, anxiety attack, attack. And, and so we turned that thing around, and we was we was you thought we was a cartoon because the way we, we was back like to that bank. <laughs> but I said that because the beach, the land, it represented comfort. And once we got so far away from that land, Ooh, we didn't God. feel that comfort that we felt. Yeah. Why am I saying that? Because sometimes in life, you will drift away from God. Mm -hmm. And not only would you be like we were, having anxiety and having depression and, and going through Amen. that. Mm -hmm. But you got to yeah, make sure that you good. come back. To the right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you come back to the peace. Yeah. That surpasses all understanding. All once, right. we that yeah. boat, once we stepped on that land, we were good. And I'm telling somebody right now, <laughs> oh, you need yeah. to turn 
around. You need to make a spiritual U-turn and come Amen. back to the one that can change your situation. You Amen. need to come back to the one that can turn Amen. your situation around. Amen. And I want to tell you right now, like I tell you on Sunday, do not be dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will no, take care of you. Because De De Deuteronomy 31 and 6 says he will never leave you nor forsake you. Oftentimes when we don't feel God's presence, it's because we left him. We left him. Amen. Because God's voice not only gives us courage, it gives us comfort. But watch this. God's voice brings change mm -hmm. to our life. Mm -hmm. Now, we wouldn't even be on this call tonight if it wasn't for God's voice. Mm -hmm. Amen. Heard Amen. God's voice. That's when you gave God your first yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You told God, yes, I will live for you. Yes, I'm changing my ways. Yes, I'm putting my life in your hands. But can I tell you, this is a season where we don't go, we don't just give God one yes. No, no, we have to continue to give God another yes. Somebody ought to give God a yes right now. Yes, yes right now. Yes. yes. The voice yes. of the Lord breaks the cedar. Yes. And the Lord breaks yes. in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. Now, what, what does that have to do with us? Well, cedar trees in this in the biblical days were some of the strongest and, and most durable trees. They were, to, they were really considered unbreakable. Yeah, yeah. But the Bible just told us the voice Jesus, of the Lord Jesus, breaks the cedar. Somebody, mm. oh, you just missed your shot. That shows us how powerful God's voice is and how important God's voice is in our life. Because this means no matter how strong the stronghold may seem, God can break it. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank this you, Lord. means no matter how big you, the problem may seem to us, God can break it. This means no matter how hard it seems, how hard the situation is, God can break it. And God not only can break it, but God says, I want to comfort you in the midst of it. I can break it. And I love this because the Lebanon, when it says the cedars of Lebanon, is really a common metaphor for God humbling the proud mm. and cutting them down for judgment. Mm. So, so this, this works two ways because God can either cut down the situation that's that's up against us, or he can cut us down from the pride that we're walking in. Jesus, uh, Jesus. And, and I, I've made up in my mind. Either way you want to do it, God, do it. <laughs> if, do it. I'm mind, if I'm out of order, God, check me. If, if the situation seems overwhelming to me, God, break it. I don't know who needs to hear that right now, but God said, just tell God, like uh, Paul Borden said, God, whatever you're doing in this season. Please don't do it without me. God, whatever you're doing in this season, it could be a tough season right now for you. But God, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me, Lord. Don't do it without me. Do whatever you need to do to bless me. Do it. And I thank God for the blessing that comes even after the break. Y'all, we talked about the pieces. <laughs> we talked about how sometimes God will provide for us and it'll be pieces. Sometimes we, you, somebody, you made it through just today off pieces. Come on, y'all. Yeah, but thank, Amen. God, thank God that you kept your peace. Yeah, in the midst of the storm. I love it because mm -hmm. it's better to allow God's power to handle our situation and even our proclivities. And yes, proclivities is mm -hmm. our weaknesses. I love it because Isaiah 40, 29, write this down. It says he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Y'all, there's moments where we can be, we can act strong all we want, but y'all, there's moments where life Lisa, I'm, I'm sorry, Lisa, I got to keep using, but life be life, -y. life be happening. And, and sometimes it just draws the strength away from us. And we got to call upon the name of the Lord yeah. because the name of the Lord is a strong power and we can run to it and are safe. Just told us he gives us power. That's why we got to understand his grace is sufficient. It's enough for us. And, and watch this, God gives us the strength to handle the struggle and the strongholds of life. But how yeah. does he, he does it with his anointing that's on our life. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I, I don't know if you realize this or not, but, but the only reason you are where you are today, yeah. I don't care if you've been saved 10 years, one year, 10 weeks, a week, you have an anointing on your life. And that's why you are able to handle the problems that you go through. Because if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit that's and right. the anointing on your life, you would have broke up, cracked up, and just 
call you know, for call that's right by, amen by now yeah. because god has given you the anointing to make yeah. it through what you're going through matter of fact yeah. the bible tells us the anointing breaks every yoke isaiah 10 and 27 says and the yoke will be will, will be will destroy be, will be destroyed because of the anointing of the oil yes mm. yes, yes. Somebody else say, anoint me, God. Anoint me a friend. Anoint me, God. Be here on the call on Wednesday nights. Because it's just not enough to be filled up on Sundays. Come because on. sometimes life be happening. So life happens on Monday. Life yeah. happens on Tuesday. <laughs> And if mm -hmm. you try to go all week until next yeah. Sunday, let me tell you something. You're going to feel weak, yeah. very weak. Because seven days without God. Amen. One right. Week. Amen. Okay. It's That's one W-E-A. -E and I don't know about you. I cannot go a day without God. Mm -hmm. Let's go seven days. So that's, that's why it's important for us to pull up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pull up and get our fill up on Wednesday nights yeah, because we need a refill of the Holy Ghost. We need a refill of God's anointing because you never know what you have to face even tomorrow. So you need a fresh anointing. God, somebody say fresh wind, fresh wind right now. Fresh wind right now in my family. I need you, God, because this is a yoke that is trying to weigh, weigh you down. But I thank God that the anointing breaks it and it holds mm -hmm. us together. Y'all, y'all remember in Acts 2. In Acts 2, they went up in the upper room and they were they were praying to God. They were up there praying, and then there was a, a, a rushing wind that came in, and it was the Holy Ghost that came in. It was on the day of Pentecost. And, and see what I loved about it, it says they were in the house, they were in a room. Watch this. Sometimes we think the only way. That the Holy Ghost and the, the, the presence of God and the power of God can show up is at 5060 East 62nd Street. Mm -hmm. I thank God that we're right here on this platform, yeah. that you're right there in your home. Yeah. Because if you call upon that name right now in that home, there will be a rushing wind that will come in there. They weren't in the church. Acts 2 said they were in the home. They were in the home. And they begin mm -hmm. to praise God. And when they praise God, there was something about the presence and the glory of God that came in that house. Yeah. For a minute. Because I know somebody, you need God's glory to just have his way in that room, uh -huh. in that house, on that job, in that car mm -hmm. right now. Somebody else say, God, I need you to rain on me. God, I need you to rain on me. I need you on it. Right now, I need you to right go now. from the room, God. Search this house. Search my body. Search my people. If there's anything like you, remove it, Holy Ghost. Remove it. Somebody on this call right now. You're to the point at the end of the road. But I thank God that Galatians, let us not become pretty and well doing. For in due season, you shall reap. Mm. Thank God. I want to tell you, my sister, my brother, I want to tell you, family, you will not give up. Quitting is not an option. You, you will Lord. not give in. You will not throw in the towel. I don't know who needs to hear that right Thank now. You, because somebody, you thought about giving up last week. You thought about throwing in the towel. I don't know what it was, but God said, don't give up. God Jesus. says, I'm going to your strength. Mm. Your it's on the way. Somebody say, your help. It is on the way. Help is on the way. James ah. 4 and 8 says this. Draw near to My God. God. James mm. 4 and 8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw he will near, near to you. That's a scripture right there for you, right there. We need to draw closer to God and watch him draw closer to you. That's a, That's a relationship. Ooh. It's not one-sided. God says, I desire to have a relationship with you. Oh, yes. Not just mm -hmm. once a week. Mm -hmm. I want a relationship with you every day. Every that's my day. prayer. That's my prayer right there. Every Whose voice are we listening to? Every Lift your mm -hmm. hand. Lift your hand. Lift mm -hmm. your hand. I feel God's presence. I feel his presence. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. Whoa. Your word is a lamp yes. into our feet and a light into our path. God, we thank you for your word, which gives us courage, which, which comforts yes. us and which changes thank the situation. God, I speak right mm. now life into your our people, your people, God. I speak life into our family. I speak life into that relationship. I speak life into that business. I speak life in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, God, that you said you give us life and life more abundantly. So, Father, we thank you, God, for your word. 
Thank you, God, that it strengthens us, God, in the moments that we are weak, Father. I thank you for each and every one who has logged on tonight. God, I speak blessings over them and their family, God. God, I speak increase, God, in the name of Jesus. God, fill them up with your spirit, God, right now, Father. Let them feel your fresh anointing even right now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. God, I pray you stir up something on the inside of them that will create a fire, God, the type of fire, God, that will not allow them to be quiet. Father, mm -hmm. we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. God, we lift up Sister Rhonda Reynolds' family, God. We pray blessings over them, God. We pray for Sister Michelle Maddenley's son and her niece, God. We pray blessings over them, God. We lift up we lift up Ariana's father, God. Yes, we speak yes. a healing virtue yes, over his body, yes, God. Jesus. We thank you for the praise yes. that we have heard today, God. Yes. We thank you for all that you are doing. We thank you for what yes. you've already yes. done. And God, we got, we thank you yes. for the faith that we just received. God, we believe that the worst is over. And God, we believe that the best is yet to come. So God, we're not going to wait till the battle is over. We lift up all those who are affected in Nashville, God. We come against violence right now in the name of Jesus. Comfort those families, God, the victims. Families, God. We thank you, God, for what you are about to do in this country and this community, God. We lift up all those in Mississippi. Mississippi, who have lost homes and family members, God, we pray mm. you will be there to comfort them, God. We thank you right now, God, mm. that you will never leave us nor forsake us, God. So right now, God, I pray that your presence will be felt for my brother and my sister right now in the name of Jesus, God. Just a kind of glory right now in that house, God. God, we thank you that whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We bind Satan right now on every hand. He is a defeated foe, and we thank you that victory is ours. So, God, we're not going to wait to the battle. God, we said we're going to release our praise right now in the devil's face, God. Even in the midst of the storm, God, we're going to bless your holy and righteous name. In Jesus' name, we Amen. Somebody Jesus, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on and glorify your God. Hallelujah, Lord. Have your God. Glorify your God. Come on. Thank oh, him for breakthrough. Yes, Come on. Thank him for breakthrough. Yes, Hallelujah. He's breaking every cedar. He's breaking every stronghold. He's breaking generational curses in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take your hands off of our youth in the name of Jesus. God, you got to say hallelujah. God, we thank you, God, for your angels that you have encamped around us, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Glory to your name. We bless you right now. We honor you, God. We glorify you. We trust you. Somebody type it in there. I trust you, God. Come on, I trust you. I trust you. It's not easy, my name, God. I trust you. God, I can't trace you, God, but I trust you, God. God, even if it's financial issues, God, I trust you, God. God, open up the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing right now. Trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Do it in the name of Jesus. Do it in the name of Jesus. Do it in the name of Jesus. You will not lack in this season. lack in this season. You will not lack in this season. You will mm -mm. God loves you. God loves you. Hallelujah. Yeah. If nobody ever hasn't told you in a while, God loves you. God loves you. Come on. God loves you. And we love Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Glorify you, Lord.